Hello and welcome back to Upstream Magazine, the podcast. I'm your host, Srinath Ramkumar, and with me today again is Nikolai Herman. Hi, everyone. So, Nico, you know what time it is, right? It's finally time for the general meeting again. Yes, I'm getting yes. excited. Uh, what, do you, what about you? Yeah, it's very exciting. It's usually the time where we all go to a place and have some fun, as well as make some policy decisions about uh, what the PHC net is going to do in the next year. But this year, it's all virtual. It's going to be online, and uh, we're going to be electing our new steering group online. How exciting is that? Yes, I hope everything's going to work out. Of course, uh, technical issues might be a thing. But I think the general meeting group is doing a good job at organizing everything. Yeah, definitely. So because of the general meeting, which is coming up so soon, we thought uh, you might have some interest in trying to know what these steering group positions uh, contain and what they, what these roles are meant to uh, do and why they are there, why they are in these specific sort of tasks and stuff like that. So for that reason, what we're doing now is we're doing an interview with all the members of the steering group and all the coordinators of the different working groups of the Max Planck PhD Net. So we plan to sort of have a discussion with them over the uh, podcast series as well as uh, then try to have an interview with them as soon as we have the general meeting which is started on like uh, November 4th to November 6th. Anyway, so if you guys are interested, please uh, pay co close attention to this. And the uh, first three people who are going to be interviewed today are going to be the spokesperson, that's Lindsay Bultema, the deputy spokesperson in Connie Van Schepenberg, yes, and uh, <laughs> the general secretary in Julia Van Biesel. Anyway, so I hope you guys enjoy this. And I've been speaking for very long now, so I'll let you guys go to the discussion with uh, the three steering group members of the first part of this steering group interview. See you guys on the other side. Hello, guys. Welcome to Offspring Magazine, the podcast. Uh, Hope you guys are doing well. So joining us today on the on this episode is three members from the steering group of the Max Planck PhD Net. That's Lindsay Bultema, the spokesperson, Connie Van Schep. Okay, I can't pronounce the last name. Connie from the deputy spokesperson, and Yulia, who's the uh, general secretary. Welcome, guys. Hi. Thank you. Thanks for having us. I'm sorry, Connie. How do you how do I pronounce your last name? I find Van, that really difficult. Van Schepenberg. Okay, now I got it. Uh, Nico, do you want to take it away? Sure. All right. So maybe as a first uh, thing, could you give us a short introduction to yourself, like what you're doing, and then maybe uh, why you got interested in the position you're in? Yeah, so I, can, I guess I can take it off. I'm Lindsay. I am the spokesperson this year of the Max Planck PhD Net. I'm currently doing my PhD in Hamburg at the Max Planck Institute for the Structure and Dynamics of Matter. And I am towards the end of my PhD, luckily I can say, so there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And I am focusing on liquid phase electron microscopy and doing a little bit of method development and just trying to understand the radiation damage that is occurring due to the electron beam and how to mitigate so how did I get interested in the PhD net? Well, I was my institute's external representative and then I got invited to the general meeting and I thought, hey, this seems like a really fun idea. And I've always somewhat been involved, I would say from my undergraduate to even high school, tried to do different leadership volunteer organizations. And this just seemed like the general transition. I would say that Everyone always asks, what's your hobby? And I think my hobby is just being involved. And I would say that um, last year I was the CPT section representative, so chemistry, physics, and technology. And I just really enjoyed the steering group. So I wanted another year and ran for a spokesperson. 
Great. Uh, let's uh, go next to Connie. Yeah, hi, I'm Connie. I'm this year's um, PhD Net Deputy Spokesperson. Um, I'm doing my PhD at the MPI for Human Cognitive and Brain Sciences in Leipzig. Um, I'm hoping to finish my PhD next year, um, but I'm currently still working on, um, yeah, sort of how brain, how the brain supports the, our ability to speak and um, how this can go wrong in people who have suffered, for example, a stroke and then suffer from aphasia or um, people who have dementia and lose um, some abilities of their, um, their language. Um, and this is um, what I'm researching in my PhD. And yeah, I started getting interested in PhDNet because I was um, the internal or one of the internal PhD representatives at our institute. And I'm really good friends also with our external um, representative. And then he got, uh, took me along to the general meeting last year. And um, yeah, I think actually that was my first real contact to PhDNet and also the group of people that are involved there in the steering group. And I just really liked the vibes at the meeting. And I was really excited about so many people being there, wanting to get involved and wanting to help and uh, like to work together and stuff. And then it was a more or less spontaneous decision to run for deputy spokesperson. And yeah, um, it's, I've never reg regretted it since. So I'm really happy to have this role. Okay, thanks for the intro. And uh, lastly, Julia. Hello, I'm Julia van Biesel. I'm the general secretary of PhDNet and or of the steering group of PhDNet. And I managed to turn 30 yesterday. <laughs> and hey, um, congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, I'm currently working at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology, which is in Leipzig, um, as well as Connie's Institute is. And uh, my PhD is about um, the shoulder biomechanics in hominoids. So I'm comparing shoulders between humans and grass um, and hopefully some other apes in the future. Some research I, that I really like and that's very exciting, but basically has nothing to do with what I do um, in the steering group <laughs> um, because this is more, yeah, managing people and um, enhancing communication, stuff like this. So as Connie, I was also only the internal representative of our institute. Um, and I went to the general meeting because our external couldn't make it. And yeah, as, as Connie just said, it was a really nice meeting, meeting a lot of people. And uh, I got really hooked up. <laughs> it sounds very nice. Okay. So just a quick follow-up question, because you guys mentioned that you guys are doing certain roles within the PhD. So how much of every week do you guys spend doing these roles? Let's start off with uh, Yulia. Uh, I find it really hard to say. So... As general secretary, I am automatically head of the secretary group and much of my work also concerns the group. Um, and then when we had like a lot of elections, I didn't do that much because I have a wonderful group and um, they are doing just fine without me. <laughs> But before that, like preparing everything, organizing everything within the group and making sure everyone has all the materials they need, that was a lot of work. Um, And yeah, I, I would say in some weeks it's a lot. It's like maybe a whole day that I spend only doing PhD network or even more. And then in other weeks, it's maybe just an evening. Yeah, it really fluctuates. Mm -hmm. But can you give it like a number on average or is it too much to average like that? Well, maybe you can roughly say like 10 hours a week or so okay. or less. Okay, that's cool. Uh, what about you, Connie? Um, I would say it really depends um, what projects we are currently doing or what I'm currently involved in. So for me, um, there's also always N squared, um, which sort of comes on top of um, PhDNet. And um, when there's a lot to do with like steering group stuff or PhDNet stuff and N squared, then it can really, it, sometimes it's half a week, I would say, that I spent on stuff. Um, but then there are other weeks where it's only like, part of one day or so um we do have a lot of meetings so like if you have a meeting then that's of course like one or two hours a day or so um those meetings come up but yeah i would say on average 
if I average all of it, it's maybe like one third of the week. Um, yeah. All right. Mm, Lindsay? Yeah, so I would agree with what I said before. Um, similar to Connie, as spokesperson, I'm also involved with N Squared. So there's a bi, yeah, bi month every two weeks, there's a meeting. And then we have the steering group call every week. And I talk to Ilka in the GA every single week. So that's a few hours right then and there. And it definitely varies, which is quite nice. So it's not as though every single week you must put in five hours or you must put in 10 hours. So it is flexible, uh, maybe on average, roughly 10. But I think it's been really great because as a steering group, you can always share the tasks. So if you say at this moment in time, I'm really swamped with my PhD because really we're here to do our PhD and this is something we're doing in addition, then Connie or Yulia or Simon or Nikki or Sarah, somebody is going to take up the, like help everyone else out. So it can get overwhelming, but it's also manageable. And I think it's also something that's really great for us to learn because when we move on to whatever is after the PhD, there's always going to be opportunities to take more and more on. And if you don't ask for help and if you don't realize what is possible in your day, you're going to overwhelm yourself. So I would just say that this is a good, a good test and a good practice for what is to come. Great. Okay, so maybe as it already has been mentioned to some extent, could you just quickly explain what exactly your tasks are or your responsibilities in the steering group? Uh, maybe, Lindsay, if you could start. Yeah, so in the general as spokesperson, I'm automatically as one of the main connecting points from the Max Planck PhD net to the general administration. So I mentioned I have the weekly calls with Ilka in which I'm going to get the updates on what is going on on the side of the general administration in Munich, sort of general. Ilka Schisler gave the <laughs> Yeah, uh, and she is responsible for PhD net and sort of the career, like not career, but sort of early career researchers within the general administration. And she has been with the Max Planck PhD net or responsible for them pretty much since the beginning. So she really understands what has happened. And if we ever have a question on who to talk to within the general administration, she's the person that knows exactly who to talk to. And if we ever need to set up an appointment with the president of the Max Planck Society. She is contacting and coordinating that. And so she's generally our go-to person within the general administration. In addition to my sort of just general communication with the GA, instead of general administration, GA, I also have the responsibility of N squared, which is the network and networks and also included in that is going to be Helmholtz and Leibniz. I'm sure we'll go into detail with that. And I know Connie, Connie's honestly this year more involved with N squared than I am, which I think is also one of the nice things with the steering group is both of us are in N squared, but we can share the responsibilities and we can share the focus, which is really cool. And so there's in addition to that and the side projects this year, um, it's more of an overseeing role, and I think that's a similar thing to what was done last year when Alex was also the spokesperson, and just making sure that all of the small projects are running, that the communication to the X1 reps is smooth, and I would say one focus this year has really been trying to promote outreach and to disseminate a bit more information to the doctoral research of the Max Planck Society, and when we were doing this, is maybe through social media campaigns that we're trying Okay, thanks. Uh, maybe Connie. Yeah, um, so officially as the deputy spokesperson, I of course deputize for the spokesperson whenever there is need. Um, but this year there hasn't been any actual like official need. <laughs> but I try to of course um, support Lindsay whenever we have to yeah, communicate with the GA or other bodies. Um, and yeah, then I'm also, as Lindsay already mentioned, I'm part of the N squared board, um, and I've been really enjoying this, um, to be part of this board this year. So I'm also, yeah, voluntarily investing a lot of time in this. 
Um, and then as a deputy spokesperson, I'm automatically also the financial officer, which means that I sort of oversee the PhD in its budget and I can sign off on, um, yeah, for example, seminar requests or when the, we want to buy something from the PhD net um, budget, then I'm the one who signs off on the, the offers. Um, yeah, that's sort of the official tasks. And um, yeah, and apart from that, I mean, yeah, as Lindsay mentioned, she's sort of taking a bit over this overseeing role um, in the steering group, which is really helpful. And um, I'm also glad that she's doing such a great job at that. Like, I know that I wouldn't be able to do such a good job, I'm sure. So, uh, but that gives me, for example, the chance to go a bit more in like specific projects and um yeah, I've been really involved with the Open Science Working Group this year, um, which has been a lot of fun. And um, yeah, and Squared, as I mentioned before. So um, I just was able to sort of pick some of the, the topics that I'm really interested in and work on those in more detail. Okay, thanks. And uh, maybe lastly, Julia again. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, so as I said before, I'm also head of the... Um, secretary group which I think it's also one of the main roles that I have in and yeah uh, I I help with external elections and preparing the group for all the tasks um, organizing the whole group and then there are also some other topics that we like took upon ourselves basically within the steering group but they are not really um, key to our roles so it's also nice um, if you're interested in a specific topic then we can just go ahead or, like talk to the others and go ahead with yeah working on that trying to improve that so there are things like um, for example we had a tax survey that we created because we wanted to learn more about how the CSIS advisory committee is running at the different institutes um, yeah and this is like so especially communication was one of the things that I wanted to work on more um, as general secretary, which I think also works well with the role uh, because you get also in contact with a lot of institutes and external reps. Yeah. One thing I would like to add with that is you, we, have to be, I think you, we had the idea at the beginning and I think it was you to send out a welcome email to all the external reps this year. And I yeah. think that's just been wonderful that now when an external rep is elected, they received this email from us. So they have a little bit of an idea. And that's something that was really the brainchild of our lovely, you know, general secretary <laughs> here. So <laughs> thank you for that. That sounds good. Yeah, because I think sometimes they might don't even know about it, our PhD net. And then just getting in contact with them, being proactive is a good idea. Nice. We talked about uh, representatives and external representatives, right? So as a steering group, you guys are sort of representative of all the PhD students in the Max Planck Society. And you put forth all the problems that they have or selected problems which a big cohort of them have to the GA and stuff. So does it feel intimidating to represent so many people? Um, I maybe I'll start because I'm just... Um something came to my mind like I don't really think of it as being intimidating like I I don't know I think it's really a great opportunity that we are being able to do this um, and to to gather like all this information and to distribute it to the the PhDs and also talk to the general administration and actually one thing that has also been mentioned um, before is that uh, we are sharing all of these tasks as a team and this is something that is is really um, important in the steering group and that really makes it so exciting and also sort of easy because we are at least six of us working actively on on all of these topics and we really share the tasks between us and um, also the responsibilities so to say and um, yeah, this has been what, yeah, that's why I, I never thought of it as being intimidating because I knew I'm not alone in this. We're all in this together. Yeah, I think it's, I agree with Connie and I would say it's more, you maybe are nervous before some meetings as if you were going to present your thesis and or your, your results in front of the group that day at the group meeting. So you get nervous, but you have a team behind you. And obviously, if you present some facts and figures to someone within the GA or to some body outside of the Max Planck Society, 
you should be able to back up your claims. So if you say something, be able to back it up. And that's why there might be a little bit of preparatory work before some of these meetings, but you're not alone. And I think it's manageable. Yeah, and something from maybe for me to add up, um, a problem that maybe all representatives have is that they fear that they don't know all the ideas and opinions that the people they represent have. And yeah, I was a bit afraid in the beginning that I would maybe fight for something that people don't really care about, or I would neglect other points that they are really strong about. But the good thing that I also learned with uh, the steering group is that people would really reach out to you if they think you you're not representing themselves uh, th these people well. So that's also nice. So please, uh, yeah, do this. Reach out to us if you are satisfied or if you are unsatisfied. So we always know what your opinion is and what your ideas are. And maybe just one more thing is that I'm, I guess. Hopefully everyone, also the other doctor researchers and also the people from the GA are aware that we're doing this voluntarily and we're doing it as on the side of our PhD. So I think they're, um, yeah, they're not angry at us if we get something wrong also, because I mean, we were not trained to do this. We just um, wanted to do it and we really like doing it. But um, yeah, we're, it's still a voluntary job and you can only do as much um, on the side of your PhD. <laughs> <laughs> completely agree with that yeah. yeah i mean this sounds great so this already i guess brings us to some extent to our next question so there seems to be a lot of things that are uh um that are like a lot of fun i guess in the sg but then also maybe can you give us a bit of a picture of what things maybe don't go so smoothly all the time like uh, i guess communication is like a big thing if you're six people it's hard to coordinate everything uh like uh on a maybe daily basis even. Um, so maybe can you give us like the good and the bad of your time in the steering group? Okay, that's that's nearly difficult. So, I mean, like we also did a um, workshop together, which was really nice. And uh, yeah, it fused us as a group a bit closer together. But uh, yeah, obviously, if you're not living even in the same city, communication is always difficult. Maybe Corona helped a bit in improving that, at least <laughs> technical wise and software uh, wise. So yeah, there we learned a lot. But um, sometimes it's difficult if we have a problem that occurs during the week and it needs to be solved immediately and you can't reach everyone by the second because obviously, as um, Connie just said, we're also doing our PhD and are not on reachable by email or phone like every second of the day um yeah but overall i really like being part of this group all members are super nice we are all quite different in some aspects but um yeah we kind of have the good <laughs> of every part in our in our group and i think um, the composition is works really well so there were not, as far as I remember, really strong difficulties or problems or issues that we had. Okay. Nice. I mean, that sounds, sounds great. Um, yeah, maybe Connie, if you want to continue. Um, yeah, I agree with what Julia said um, to all of it. And um, I think what I would say was maybe difficult for us this year was uh, the fact that the pandemic started. So a lot of the plans that we had made as a steering group um, in terms of our agenda, our key points, the meetings we wanted to attend, but also the meetings that we wanted to have between us um, as the steering group, like meeting for this workshop that Julia mentioned um, this was supposed to be in Frankfurt. So all of these plans basically got jumbled around and got cancelled even. So that was really hard to deal with in the beginning because we had to suddenly change our priorities and like refocus and and come up with new ideas and maybe that has also a little bit affected at least in the beginning our um communication um in the group but i think because we then in the end still did this workshop and we of course have our weekly calls and we also had some socials um virtually where we like um i don't know had drinks together and stuff like that so that we totally managed to to bypass these difficulties and to make it uh, worthwhile still. So I think we dealt with it really well. Um, but yeah, maybe this whole Corona situation, I guess that's what's a bit different for us this year compared to other steering groups. 
Um, but yeah, what I really have liked this year, what I am still really enjoying is just the, the fact that you learn so much, you learn so many skills, you really learn how to communicate, how to represent, how to gather your ideas and focus them um, also in meetings and conversations with um, members of the Max Planck Society and like one of like the government bodies basically um, in the Max Planck Society and also to your, um, your fellow doctor researchers. So these skills have been really, really useful and um, you really get to know a lot of people also through this, um, this work and you get to network a lot and um, yeah, just get to distribute your ideas and thoughts to a lot of people. And I think that's been really really great for me this experience okay. and Lindsay yeah so I agree with what has been said before so I don't want to repeat that one thing that I would like to highlight is that when it comes to the issues you face it was with what platforms for communication we're going to use because there are so many things out there and I think for a while it was do we use Skype do we use Webex do we use Zoom do we use Big Blue Button and Every single week it was, what are we using? So that in itself was a little bit chaotic. Also with where do you keep your minutes and notes? And we continued with what was done in the past, but facing technological difficulties, things not uploading, things not downloading, you have to be always thinking on the fly. So I would say that's something that was a bit of an issue. Maybe a few months ago now, we're back in the routine of everything is working. Own cloud works. Yes, thank you. And um, so that's quite nice. But I, I think that also speaks towards this year's steering group. And it was mentioned a little bit with COVID and how we had to really shift some of our focus. And I would say this group in general, we've been able to shift and think on the fly and think about what... What do people need during this pandemic? You know, when people are doing home office, not doing home office, what are the regulations? What are the rules? We tried to give some information and we were very fortunate that at around the beginning, so in April, we had a meeting scheduled with President Stratman already before the pandemic. So we could discuss some of our needs and wishes. And we ran a little survey before that to highlight what was going on. And they, they really take that seriously. And that's something that, because this steering group is, you know, is able to be just so dynamic, we're able to do. So I would say overall, it, it is interesting um, to see this year's group compared to last year's group and how the general administration handles the two different sort of groups. I would say what's interesting is at the beginning of the year when in, in Munich, they think, oh, there's a new group coming in. So they're a bit hands off. and It takes everyone time to get to know each other. And I would say midway through the year is when you finally know exactly who to contact within the GA and, and you, you really get headway. And so I think it can be a bit difficult for both sides as you have the one year term and you really need to accomplish everything you need to accomplish in that one year or make sure that everything is properly documented for the future generations. And I know this is something that's been discussed in a few of our meetings and how do we make sure whoever is the next steering group knows what has been done and where to find things in our mess of an own cloud folder and <laughs> those little things like that. So hopefully in the future, whoever starts, they possibly have a better foundation with the, with a GA and we can do a better handover so they can just really get the ball rolling and they don't have those first few months of wondering what is going on and maybe we'd recommend for them to also do sort of a training. Our training was on sort of project management negotiation, but then it encompassed a lot more and it was supposed to be physical, but it turned out to be a virtual format, which honestly I, I think was good for us because we usually communicate in the virtual format. So it helped us, <clears throat> excuse me, it helped us really, um, consolidate our thoughts and ideas and work together. So I would say there's a tip for anyone and everyone who is doing some sort of volunteer group experience. If you can have some professional training on group dynamics, networking, project management, please take advantage of that. And I'm fortunate that the Max Planck Society has supported us in, in this sort of training. Okay, great. Maybe just a quick follow-up. You guys were mentioning uh, like the GA a lot, and as 
the Max Planck Society is uh, funded by public money. Um, I maybe I thought they are more like an administration that uh, is like working like I don't know. You know, you know what you hear from people that work for the government that they're slow and all of these uh, prejudices. So, what was your experience in this regard? So I would I would jump in. So I would say that. Well, I'm not German, so I don't know how it is in German bureaucracy. I know I know the stereotypes for American bureaucracy. But we're not going to go into politics right now. Uh, <laughs> so I would say that it's it's more about the the age of the Max Planck Society and the general structure that is in place. So I think everyone within the general administration is very hardworking and they're very receptive to our ideas. I would say that there is just some general hurdles that you have to overcome and they're willing to help you overcome those hurdles but sometimes they maybe don't know how to do this so they have to talk to somebody else and then someone else and when you really promote new ideas it, it can become difficult but we're very lucky because we have very open people supporting us so yeah okay. Maybe already. not as bad as the Ameri <laughs> as the stereotypical American, well, but I can't speak for the German side. I mean, maybe the Max Planck Society is just more motivated in general to get things done compared to like the, the real government. Because I don't know, I think if you've been to like one of these, um, um, I don't know, Kaffau uh, in Munich, for example, it, it can get super messy and annoying. So, yeah. All right. So maybe, yeah, let me bring it back the... into the... Sorry, the topic that we have. Uh, maybe Sorry. we can also give a big thank you at this point to Ilka, our spokes, uh, or yeah, contact person in the GA, because she's just one person, right? And only half of her job is um, helping us out, and she has other responsibilities as well. But she's always there for us if we have a problem or issue, and has regular meetings with Lindsay every week. So that's really great, and yeah, uh, we are really happy and grateful to have her. All right, that sounds great. So uh, bringing back the topic from bureaucracy and everything, because you guys set a certain goals or certain standards that you want to achieve by the end of your term. And this is something that every steering group creates at the, at the beginning of its term, and it's something that they want to achieve by the end of the year. So my, I have a three-part question. So first is, what, what goals did you set? The second part is, which ones could be fulfilled? And the third one, probably the more like broader scale one is do you think that because the steering group turns over on a year to year basis you already touched upon this a little bit so because it turns over on a such short time frame do you think it makes it difficult to address some systemic issues that we face as phd students um so maybe i'll start um so i guess some of the the major key points that we had were um for example, working conditions, so um, trying to push for an increase in the base salary of the Doktorandenfördervertrag, so the, the contract that doctor research and the researchers in the Max Planck Society receive, pushing that to at least 65% um, of the TFOID um, bargaining agreement. Um, and uh, then something else was something like onboarding, like making the onboarding process a bit, bit more smooth, uh, like a bit smoother so that you receive the contract that you will work on earlier than on the day of your arrival <laughs> at the, the MPI. Um, yeah, like some of these more yeah, basic um, conditions that doctor researchers work with. And I think this is something that um, is a really hard goal to achieve. And you're right in saying that um, these are some more systemic um, changes that, that should be made in the Max Planck Society and that are hard to push through in one year. So this is basically not possible um, just because the Max Planck Society works quite slow and it takes a while to like push this idea to the correct people in the general administration and the, the Max Planck bodies and then for them to to have a look at this idea and think about it and then for them to act. So I would say out of these goals, we can't really expect for that to work within one year. But the thing is, I mean, these are such important goals that they are always um, taken up by the next steering group because this is something that we all want. So it is a continuing goal that we have. 
Um, it's just not something that one steering group can solve. Um, for example, if, if you look back at um, what the PhD net has achieved in terms of increasing the number of holidays um, of the Doktorandenfördervertrag from 20 to 30 holidays um, per year, this is something that was uh, started a few years ago. And then the steering groups just kept pushing it, like each each steering group again kept pushing this topic. And then finally, after some years um, Last year, it got uh, pushed through finally. So this is something that, yeah, it was a goal that one steering group came up with and they couldn't solve it, of course, on their term, but then it still got seen through after a few years. I guess one thing that I could add to that is to really validate our claims and what, what is important. We have the survey every single year. So you obviously have the 2000, present the 2019 survey in 2020 so in planning maybe the survey for this year, you think, what were the key points that we really wanted to achieve? What questions can we add to the survey to make sure that in 2021, they will have the data to back up these claims and wishes that we have? So I would say the survey really helps with this. So, I mean, I said in the beginning that I was also mostly interested in communication and gladly uh, and outreach also as well. And gladly the other members of the steering group agreed that this should be one of our main key points. Um, yeah, and this is one of the things where I was also highly engaged in. So we already talked about this a bit in the beginning, but uh, we also try to broaden access to Max and giving people bigger um, yeah, knowledge about how to reach out to us using Max. Uh, by this, we also started to do virtual sessions to introduce people to specific organs within the PhDNet, within the GA, within the whole Max Planck Society. Um, so I would say we partly managed to fulfill these goals already, which is really nice. <laughs> but I was also uh, on the not long-term projects involved, um, which I I I always I'm always impressed by the other members that mainly work on these long-term projects because the thing is that they are not really satisfying because you probably won't reach a real goal by the end um, of your term. And yeah, <laughs> so it, it's, it's great that other people are working on this and are doing so well. Mm. And another thing that we wanted to improve are the election procedures because there were some strong difficulties last year with some institutes that had to do multiple rounds of election. And so um, me and other members of the steering group and some of the secretary group were working on improving the statutes. Um, yeah, and they are with the GA right now. So hopefully we have some better statutes, some improvements with the general meeting. Maybe just if someone doesn't know, the statutes are like the rules under which the PhD net works, and uh, they keep getting updated based on uh, what we're doing, I guess. That's correct. Thanks, Nico. And we're going to vote on them. the change. <clears throat> Sorry, we're going to vote on the changes at this year's general meeting. But Julia, you are working on one of those long term topics, the tax survey, the thesis advisory survey, um, because this is one thing that we we want to push for is a bit more structured PhD programs. And we ran this short little survey, you organized it and going through some of the data with some of the other steering group members. And we present, you gave the data to this, the GA and now it's just the next step. You're completely right that it's maybe not as fulfilling as some of these other projects. I know last year, I was really involved with the Mental Health Awareness Week and getting that off the ground, getting that, that sort of running. And that's really nice because you can say from this month you had this idea and from that month you can really see it coming to fruition. Um, and I would say one thing this year that's really probably somewhat similar is regards to career development because this is something that we also wanted to focus on this year. And we knew that this was an issue and we know that not everyone can stay in academia. And from our survey results, we see that people don't feel prepared. And we've had some very motivated people in the steering group and also in working groups within the PhD net, sort of working with the people in the GA and finding 
ways to improve career development. So right now there is this series every single week, the Max Planck Career Evolution, in which they have either alumni or they have um, sort of industry talks and they have maybe a postdoc or a PhD interviewing these people. And this is completely accessible and free for all people to really participate and experience. And so that's something that's that's really great, because if you look at our infographic that we prepared at the beginning of the year, there were three points. So the working conditions, career development and communication. And I think we've we've mentioned at least one point for all three of those things. So I would say we've actually we've actually done OK. So we can pat ourselves on the back. But really, this is this is also due to the working groups. And I don't think we've discussed the working groups enough in this call. We talked a lot about the GA and how fortunate we are to have the, the GA on our side, but we're six people in the steering group and we have eight or nine working groups, you know, active and active subgroups who are really the core. We're just sort of here as a steering group, but these working groups are the, are the people that are working behind the scenes and they're making sure that things like this podcast get gets produced and developed. This is something that was new. This is, we had this idea in the steering group communication. Look at us now, you guys. So this wasn't our idea from steering group. This was the working group, yeah. but we're all yeah. under PhD in it together. So yeah, that's something so the I working group. Me. So the working group is working. That's what you say. <laughs> I, I, I think so. How many more times can I say working in, in this <laughs> podcast? As many times as you want. It's just um, going to get cut out. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to turn into some awkward meme or, I don't know, gif, like work, work. <laughs> it's going to be working group is working. So work, work, work. Work, work, <laughs> anyway. work. 2020 working group worked. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, thank so, you. Yeah, I mean, you all guys already mentioned that there's a lot of people uh, aside from the steering group that is maybe not as visible. And uh, because the PhDs, as you also mentioned, uh, have to do their PhD as well, it's always good to have more people. So one thing that I found at my institute was a bit uh, unfortunate is that people don't know about the PhD net most of the time, actually. And it's uh, not that easy to get people interested. So one thing that could potentially help there is to increase the visibility. So do you think on one hand side, this is necessary? And then on the other hand, if it's necessary, uh, how can you do it? Yeah, I guess from uh, the communication outreach point, we made clear that we definitely think it's necessary. Um, although I must say, uh, we have external representatives for basically each institute, and one of their roles is to update their um, fellow PhDs to uh, give them an introduction to PhDNet and steering group, um, because obviously we can't reach out to every institute itself. So a shout out maybe to all externals, if you hear it, <laughs> yeah, bring this to your fellow PhDs and tell them about PhDNet. But otherwise, we also try to be a bit more proactive on this. We are currently working on um, a PowerPoint, which we want to give and make accessible for all external representatives that will aid them in presenting the PhDNet, the different working groups and the different roles and also the steering group. And also, yeah, there are other things like we were working on a poster and a flyer to already let people know that are in their onboarding process and be, uh, are yeah, in the process of becoming PhDs in the Max Planck Society, that from the very start they will know about PhDNet and what we are doing. We have also just updated our website and restructured um, the website in quite a fundamental way to make hopefully the information that we think is important more accessible, more easily visible um, on the website. Yeah, so that was also something um, that we took on as a little project and um, of course we have also increased our social media output especially on Twitter but also Instagram to just uh, tweet about our actions and, and plans and ideas um, yeah and I think that was also something that we we decided was necessary to do and I think we've done that as much as possible yeah and thanks you two guys for the help um, also I don't know if uh, people know it but especially Nico is also working a lot on the flyer and poster so yeah it looks amazing and we are 
we're looking forward to have it out soon. That would be great. <laughs> and also, if you guys don't follow PhDNet on Twitter, make sure you follow. Click that follow button. I mean, come on, it's not so hard. Yeah, thank you. And like some of our things. So we know you're looking, but <laughs> no. <laughs> so I was also one thing that we are doing this year is we're going to present the PhDNet survey results to the heads of administration, the in-purse coordinators, the managing directors, also people more in this like career steps mailing list. The idea is to get administration involved and aware of what PhDNet. So that way, when a new doctoral researcher arrives at the Institute, possibly they can get the information also from the administration. And that's maybe something that in the past we didn't work as much with. And hopefully this is something that the 2021 steering group is actually going to continue, maybe working a bit more with the scientific coordinators or the impress coordinators at the institutes and making sure that they're aware of PhDNet and making sure that their reps at the Institute are active and have the space to meet with directors and administration at the Institute. No, I completely agree. I mean, usually the problem is also that PhD students leave after a certain amount of time and having these people that are there maybe forever to some extent, uh, they then can, they if they know about it once, they can tell about the a new PhD students all the time. So maybe, the so this would be the first step, right? That people know about PhDNet. Now the next would be to recruit people. And I think this is generally also not the easiest uh, thing to do. So how do you guys uh, go about recruiting or think we should go about recruiting new people to PhDNet? Mm, I've, I've sort of made the experience that I can really help to approach people individually. Like if you have friends in your, in your department or if you know people that are um, already active and are interested in a certain topic and then you just ask them directly like, hey, do you want to get involved in the working group or in the steering group? And um, you really like try to, to reach out to them individually and because I think like sometimes just sending emails like, hey, we need people, like it can get a bit, like emails get lost and then people don't really feel that like we're talking to them individually or like that we're really yeah, addressing them, but more sort of addressing this anonymous crowd. Um, yeah, so I think that is something that, that helps. Like just, I mean, yeah, you have friends at your department and then just talk to them and like, like tell them how great PhDNet is and just like show them the podcast, show them our website, show them the Twitter, um, show them career evolution, all of these things and just make them aware of the great activities that PhDNet is doing. And then... Um, yeah, and then they can get interested. And I think that helps. Yeah. As a follow-up, do you guys believe that if the previous question, like the visibility aspect of things were addressed, the number of recruitment or the type of recruitment would also increase? Or do you think recruitment has to be done in a, such a way that the visibility c should be increased? That's a very confusing question. This, this sounds like the chicken and the egg issue. <laughs> um... I, they go hand in hand, I would say, but I agree completely with Connie that you need, you, you're going to, it's, you need to approach it from both sides. You need to increase the visibility so that way you just are aware, you're present. Also on social media, when it comes to promoting your ideas, what are the needs, what are the issues that Max Planck doctoral researchers are facing? It's good to be out there. It's good to be honest because we talk a lot about the GA and we are very close to the GA, but we are not like puppeted by the GA. We are able to do what we want to do, which is quite nice. So if we have some controversial results that we want to release, we are able to do this. And so it's important for us to be social and active on social media for those people that are interested in this. But then it's also important to reach those that maybe are not on social media and talk to them in a, in a personal way, as Connie mentioned. And I think that's that's in general. You're going to have the people that are going to be attracted to the flashy lights, and then you have the people that need some of this personal contact. So we're trying to approach it from both sides. Very well said. If I answered your questions. Yeah, I think this makes a lot of sense. Um, and I mean, generally, if you just have like I don't know, on average, five people that or out of hundred, five people that know about PhDNet join, then you can do the calculation yourself. Yeah, and I've 
sorry. Uh, I just wanted to say I also found the local hubs really helpful for that. So like especially our uh, new we called Middle Germany Hub, <laughs> when we were recruiting some new people for the secretary group, that was really nice and worked very well, um, because there we have an email list that goes out to all the PhDs of all institutes within this hub, and so you have a better contact to the people directly surrounding you. Yeah, so be more proactive in your hubs as well. Mm -hmm. So do you guys roughly know how many people are active in PhDNet? Um, so we have 84 institutes and research core units that we are representing by having external representatives elected, uh, saying that we have 84 external representatives currently working within and for the PhD net, which is really great. Uh, by the way, guys, uh, I just counted, we only have 53 successful elections so far this year. So if you know that your institute hasn't elected an external representative yet, please make sure you do, <laughs> because we need we need uh, the new ones to, or like we need um, ones that have still their term running because only they are eligible to vote in the general meeting, and we need we need voters to participate in the meeting. <laughs> and then uh, I would say so maybe because we haven't said that already. So uh, Lindsay, Lindsay already said that we have these nine working groups and you should know that everyone, like every PhD within Max Planck Society can join these working groups. So you don't need to be an internal or external representative. And I would say we have a number of 50 to 100 people um, across all these working groups. So there are roughly 10 members each group, um, but that fluctuates over the year obviously, because people are defending, new people are joining. Yeah. And how can we, how could an interested person contact you, for example? Um, maybe the first thing you can do is just go to the website and check out the groups that are there. And you can directly reach out to the group. Um, they all have their email addresses uploaded and ask further detailed questions or they can invite you to further meetings. Most of them have also Slack channels. Um, and uh, just as a side note, we are going to be interviewing the other working groups and the coordinators of these working groups. So we'll have more details on that coming to you before the general meeting, which is going to happen in November. Yeah, sure. That's true also. Yeah, and uh, you can also feel free to outreach to us. It's like steering.group at mphdnet.mpg.de. So... If you if you want further details, uh, just write us an email. <laughs> Great. So uh, moving on to the next question, which is mostly concerning the networks that we have. The PhD Net is one of these networks, and we also have other associations within Germany. For example, the N Square, which is a network of networks which was recently founded. So can you give a brief explanation as to what it does and how do we support it and if like you know how is it possible to support it and what kind of support do we give there perhaps connie can take this because you're probably the most active person in n square yeah um sure so yeah and square as you said is the network of networks um and it's a sort of a meta network of the phd networks of the max Planck society so that's us the phd net um then of the, the leibniz association the leibniz phd network and then the Helmholtz Juniors, which are the, the PhD representatives of the Helmholtz Association. Um, and then we also have um, the International PhD Program um, in Mainz. Um, and those are the PhD representatives of the Institute of Molecular Biology, um, which is uh, located in Mainz. Um, yeah, and uh, we together form N squared. And um, yeah, as you can already tell by the members, we are currently non-university research organizations, mostly represented in N squared. And um, the goal, so N squared was founded in 2017, and the goal was to um, yeah together to join forces basically, so to have a, a broader network and um, increase the outreach of the things that are common to to us um, which is yeah improving the working condition of conditions of doctoral researchers um, in these organizations um, and yeah for example um, our aim is to um, yeah to to 
um, increase the, the salary to 100% um, of the, the payment that doctor researchers receive, um, not just sticking with these 50 or 65% uh, contracts. Um, then also making sure that the doctor researcher contracts are um, at least four years long, which is at least the minimum that most of us need to f finish their PhD. Um, and then also something that we are always looking into is like is the um, power abuse issues in academia, um, which we yeah which seem to to still occur a lot in in our organizations unfortunately. And on all of these topics, um, yeah, we just decided to join forces um, to increase our voice and to represent more doctoral researchers in Germany um, in one network. So that is what N-Square is all about. And um, we do that by yeah, contacting, for example, members of political parties and the government um, bodies um, in the ministry, in the Ministry of um, Education, for example, we have some contacts. And then we go to meetings of, for example, the DFG um, or other um, important yeah, scientific or research um, bodies in Germany that sort of yeah, make the decisions on, on science policy and on shape, shape science policy in Germany. So there we have, we have established some quite good contracts and um, we usually attend the meetings and um, yeah, just talk, reach out to these people and um, speak to them about our, our claims and ideas. And um, yeah, and then we also biannually have um, an N squared conference or N squared event. Um, the next one is hopefully going to take place next year in October. And um, this is something that everyone can get involved uh, with. So whoever wants to help out in organizing this event can get in touch with the N squared board. Um, and we also have a, a website which you can check out. And um, yeah, in, in other words, what really helps Unsquared is just spreading the word um, about it, uh, retweeting the tweets. <laughs> um, yeah, just, just making sure that people in your institutes also know about Unsquared um, to, to make it more visible. Um, we have also written some position papers on um, things that are important to us in the network. For example, um, a position paper on, on power abuse and or the pre prevention on power abuse in academia. And this uh, position paper is also quite known, um, like yeah, in, in different um, academic bodies in Germany, also in the government, which is really great. And um, you can check it out on, on the website. And yeah, just share this position paper and share it also with your your supervisors or your directors. Um, yeah, and just help to spread the or to make and spread more visible. That's definitely something that everyone can do. Yeah, I would just like to add a few points. So Connie was mentioning that. N squared reaches out to different political bodies and maybe you think, well, is that really necessary? Are you a lobby? Are you a political organization? And I would like to just go back to what we talked earlier about, I think Connie also mentioned it with the increase in vacation days from 20 to 30. So this is something that although the Max Planck Society agreed upon, because it is still funded through taxpayers' money, you still need to get approval from all these other organizations, these governmental bodies. So it's actually very important that we work as a collective unit and approach these people and explain these issues as a joint force instead of saying, oh, no, it's only the Max Planck that has these issues. Instead, of, it's, it's much better to say, no, this is a general issue with the system and we are stronger together. Also, we've mentioned a few times the survey that Max Planck Society like, does every year. Um, and in 2019, it was decided to do a harmonized survey with the other bodies of N squared. So now you have Leibniz, you have Hemholtz, you have IPP, you have Max Planck Society that all had a very similar survey, similar questions. The results are all published right now from all the different societies. And we're working together to come up with these reports that Connie was mentioning, different like position papers, and that are based on the survey results. So this is something that is, is quite nice. It is not, it was not a joint survey. It was a harmonized survey. And maybe in the future, we could have one that is for all. But right now, we're really making the best out of the situation. And hopefully in the future, we're, we're talking right now with the other n -squared board members to present these survey results to everybody. And so then you see that, you know, okay, I'm a doctoral researcher in the Max Planck Society. How do I compare to somebody who is in the Leibniz or Hemholtz? 
So these are little things that we're working on. And it's also important for us to realize that we're not alone. Our issues are real issues. And it's important for other people to realize that we actually have some things that are need improvement and please help us. And we're willing to put in the effort. So meet us halfway. Okay, that sounds great. I mean, yeah, when we're topic, on the topic of uh, improvement, so maybe as uh, the next question, um, I feel like the steering group is taking a lot of responsibilities in general, right? Now with the N squared adding up to it as well. And then there's other things like with communication. And I mean, you're all doing this voluntarily. So do you think the steering group maybe needs some changes in the sense that you might need another person? Or do you think this will uh, make it harder to work together because it's always harder to work together if you're more people? I think I, I, this is a, a thought that we haven't really um, thought about, I think. And it also shows that I think at the moment we probably don't see, see the need because it has been working out this year. Um, and yeah, and I think something yeah that you mentioned also, I mean, the more people you have, it gets harder to coordinate within the team. That's definitely true. Um, I would say that by having six people and by being able to always split up the tasks and by also having the working groups that do a lot of the work anyway, too, which is re really great help. I think we have been able to manage. Um, yeah, what do you others think? Um, to me, that is not something that I um, immediately thought, oh, yeah, that's a really great idea. Let's do that. What do you think? Mm, so, yeah, as you said, Connie, the, or and Nico as well, the bigger the group is, the more difficult communication within the group becomes. Um, and, yeah, I totally agree that working groups are helping out a lot. Like we did some of these core units or like working units um, for specific topics. So for example, for improving the website, we created this group that was composed of some of the web group members and some of the um, steering group members that were working towards improving the website a lot. And this, that work, worked out really well. And I think we would rather go on with this and creating specific groups that tackle specific issues we also had the tackle the tuck uh, <laughs> group that was also uh, really nice and worked out very well um but i we also are getting you and you more and more responsibilities from the general um uh from the ga <laughs> the general administration of max Planck society and it might be that future steering groups find that the responsibilities are just getting too big and they need a few further person well as i think just as a side note you guys always mention that if it is difficult for one person then some other people usually jump in to help right and i think this sort of developing this sort of a group mentality f to handle difficult problems and issues is very essential especially when you're dealing with large-scale problems which you know which can you know be derailing for people's careers as well so it i think it's it's great that you guys are doing such an amazing job as the steering group and trying to you know coordinate within yourselves and coordinate with the different working groups and we feel really happy as the podcast team nico and i can attest to that that having a steering group which is on your side when you're talking with people from the ga and dealing with other people like that so it's it's always it's great to have the support and so uh I just want to say thanks, thanks to the three of you and the three of you we're going to interview next week. And uh, this is, I mean, so far I feel very happy with the way the steering group's been working. And I think you guys know uh, better when it comes to how the, you know, the internal and the external uh, matters are dealt with. Anyway, I think I've uh, rambled on for long enough there. So, because everyone's so quiet and I feel the need to talk up. No, no, thank you so much for saying that. It's good to hear that you're satisfied with what we're, not the job that we're doing. And yeah, we're just, I think we're just really glad to have such active people in the PhD net in general. I mean, it really, it really doesn't feel like we're the only active people doing anything for PhD net at all. Like it's, we're getting so much help and so much support and so many new ideas and everyone is really engaged in PhD and that's just really great and that's what makes it so much fun. Definitely. I would like to just add, um, you had the question about adding one more person to the steering group and I would say 
we just need as a steering group, we should talk more to the working group coordinators and maybe just actually recognize the work a bit more. And we've tried to include them in some calls. And this is something that probably in 2021, whoever is the future coordinators of working groups or in the steering group, please include them in more calls and more discussions because that is really how things are going to get done. So what do you, maybe as a last question, what do you hope that the PhD net will accomplish in the next couple of years? I, okay, so I, I would say in the next couple of years, I would really like to see a unified onboarding and offboarding process of the Max Planck Society. I know this is something that we as a steering group have been looking into, and I know this is something that the GA is looking into. So that's why I say I really hope and sort of expect something to come out of this because I know people are putting in the effort. So on and off boarding. I would say in general, like keep up the professionalism. Like Piacina has become really, really professional and has been, yeah, has been really able to work on the, the key points and the goals in quite a professional way through through different channels. Um, has done a lot this year in terms of outreach, in terms of new ideas and initiatives like the Career Evolution, the podcast, new website, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so just keep up this this really professional work because that's in the end what gains you the respect as PhD Net. Um, also from really the highest level, like President Stratman and 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 other people in the Max Planck Society, they respect PhD Net because it's it's become so professional and because. Um, Yeah, we are all active and we're, we're doing such a great job in, in getting our ideas across. Um, so, yeah, I hope that this continues that way um, in the next years to come. Yeah, um, I would say something that I think we all struggled a bit this year was um, connecting between institutes and between, between DRs. There were some really nice initiatives that started last year. For example, there was a really cool science slam that was organized within institutes of the uh, Potsdam and Berlin Hub. And obviously, due, due to Corona, uh, people had issues, right? Connecting already within their institute, even within their department, and um, connection with in between institutes, I think, was really difficult. And I would hope that we don't get pushed down by Corona too much and new activities, maybe also just virtually um, see this as an opportunity will arise in the coming months and hopefully also years and that, yeah, the connection is not getting too loose. Also increasing the base salary. Yes. Let's not forget our political goals. <laughs> yep. Okay. That's been uh, perfectly great. So perf thanks a lot for joining us today we really enjoyed talking to you and we do talk to you so often and this is the first time we've recorded talking to you so this is very nice and uh, i think nico can attest to that and hopefully we can take this forward in a sensible and professional way thank you yeah thank you and really thank you for all the work that you guys have, have done with this podcast I know talking to you and just following your journey as a podcast, it's amazing. And I'm so proud that you guys are with us. And I look forward to where this podcast will go in the future. And I know you guys have a lot of really, really exciting people lined up. So everyone, please add this to your calendar and to your listen list. Well, that was an interesting discussion. And uh... yeah, it was actually quite nice to get their points of view on like all the things, because I mean, they always have like uh, a lot of meetings with uh, the directors, the president and vice presidents. So it's nice to see how they, they feel about this. But I guess it was actually they had a good experience, which uh, I mean, which means that everyone who might be interested. So if you're going to apply for one of the positions, uh, you might just enjoy it as much and also you get the chance to talk to uh, all the important people within the Max Planck Society. So I think uh, with this, uh, yeah, these were the three, first three people uh, of the steering group and next week we'll have the, um, the section representatives uh, of the steering yeah. group, uh, so of the humanities, uh, physics, uh, CPT, and BM section yeah. and we'll see what else they do because of course this is not the only task they have um, so we'll see uh, what their experiences were like 
and uh, I guess that with this I'll stop rambling on but, and now yeah. it's at the end of my monologue compared to three nuts in the intro oh. ah, well said I deserve that but anyway so uh, so good luck thanks a lot for listening everyone and if you would like to get in touch with these members please feel free to write to them at steering.group at uh, phdnets.mpg.de and as well as uh, please check out the different roles that exist on the Max Planck PhDNet website you can just open Google and type Max Planck and PhDNet and you will definitely find this as yes. the top link on your so search results our website just uh, got refurbished and it's looking already a lot better so please feel free to check it out and yeah thanks to the people who are working on that great all right thanks you all thanks all for listening and uh, i'll see you all next week with another <laughs> episode with the three other members of the steering group until then bye 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 Offspring Magazine, the podcast, is brought to you by the Max Planck PhD and in the science communication working group known as the Offspring Magazine. The podcast series is hosted by Srinath Ramkumar, Nikolai Herman, Alison Lewis, Adrian La Hoya, and Sandra Fendel. The intro-outro music is composed by Srinath Ramkumar and the pre-intro jingles composed by Gustavo Carrizzo. Please feel free to write to us with any feedback, comments, or suggestions at offspring.podcasts at phnet.mpg.de. Until next week, I'll see you then. Bye-bye, stay safe, stay strong, and stay healthy.